Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Morning Mug. We're going to come back to that musical selection in just a little bit. Um, kind of the focus for today. I am wearing my Outlander shirt. It just came in the mail. Je suis prêt. be good for this morning you know I am ready to make this recording mm -hmm. all right so I realized from two days ago um, my evening mug I uh, wanted to give folks a chance to watch it and I want to go over the trivia answers from that one so it was trivia all about tea and the first question was which three countries are the largest exporters of tea Give you a moment to formulate your answer. Three largest exporters of tea. Coming in first is China. Second is Sri Lanka. And the third is Kenya. Also known as Kenya. But you didn't know that one. Um, the second question is what three nations consume the most tea per capita? Per capita. Most tea per person. Give you a moment to construct that response. Coming in first place, Turkey. Second place, Ireland. Third place, the United Kingdom. Most consumption per capita. So, thought I should go over this. Um, so, today, everybody, I have a few announcements before we truly get started. Um, the morning mug is now on Facebook, Hetrix Morning Mug. Please don't forget to send your mug shots. You can message them to the Facebook page. You can send them to Hetrix Morning Mug at gmail.com, at Miss Hetrick on the Twitter, on the Instagram, and announcing it here, 100th episode. That's gonna be the 23rd of June, 10 a.m. Episode's gonna be live. It's gonna be a Facebook live episode. I have no idea how it's gonna go. I won't know what I'm talking about until that morning before I hit yes live. Um, so hope that you can join. Um, it would be wonderful to have a whole bunch of you um, participate in in that because we're we're getting there. Today's 76. All right. Um, so birthdays today. Happy birthday to Tom Morello, guitarist for Audio Slave and Rage Against the Machine. Uh, Broadway staple Adina Menzel, born this day, 1971. Some history, some local history. 1906, the founding of Hershey Park. And for the second time now, the resource that I use for my, uh, you know, this day in history type stuff uh, had that as one of the featured stories. Milton Hershey creating Hershey Park for his employees. Makes me a happy chocolate town kid right here. Uh, 1922, the completed Lincoln Memorial is dedicated by Chief Justice William Howard Taft. He was not serving as president at the time. Um, so that could be an easy, an easy daily dose of Hanks right there. You know, the Lincoln Memorial connecting to Forrest Gump, that epic speech where we have no idea what he actually says. And then Jenny running through the reflecting pool. Please don't do that. I mean, it's quite dramatic and I'm happy that Jenny and Forrest get reunited and the closest way from point A to point B is a straight line. I get it. But, um... I don't want you to get fined. I don't want you to get arrested. And birds frequent the reflecting pool. It's shallow. Think about that. Uh, uh. Mm. Also this day, 2003, Finding Nemo was released. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. How many times have you heard that during quarantine? Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. Um, that was gonna be the title of my episode, but I think I might save it for another time. And the sun is beating down already, and it's not even, wait, what time is it? It's nine o'clock. Ooh, summer is on its way. So today, what I wanted to talk about was the, inspired by Maria, thank you, Maria, um, and the audio selection you heard at the beginning. This is a performance called The Typewriter, a concerto for orchestra and solo typewriter. So I feel like I've seen this before online, but I wasn't sure. Um, so Maria posted it and I'm just like, I've been waiting. I've been waiting 
to be able to talk about the typewriter. Didn't do any research about the typewriter, but I knew that one of my episodes, I wanted it to be about the typewriter. So we'll get to the, the Tom connection in just a little bit, but let's talk about typewriters, the physical device of a typewriter. So characters by steel types striking paper through an inked ribbon. It has gone through a lot of evolution. Um, the first ones were the size of pianos and writing by hand was almost faster than using those first versions of the typewriter. But we get to Christopher Latham Scholes. He read an article in Scientific American in 1867 and was inspired um, coming up with his own version of the typewriter. And his second model was patented on June 23rd, 1868. Kind of weird, June 23rd. That's the date of our 100th episode. Anyway, um, he joined forces with E. Remington and Sons in 1873, 1874. A new version of the typewriter was then released and was called the Remington. Mark Twain was the first author to submit his book manuscript from a, a, a typewriter. Um, some more typewriter trivia. The first machine had capital letters only. By the way, if you're not sure where we get uppercase and lowercase, that goes back to uh, the printers and movable type printing presses. The individual letters were stored in a case, a printer's case. The uppercase, capital letters, lowercase. Oh yeah, you are so ready for Jeopardy by watching this, I'm just saying. Um, later versions of the typewriter are going to be silent versions. Winston Churchill was a fan of the silent typewriter because he wanted a quiet workspace. And I just put in the order for the next uh, Maggie Hope mystery. If you remember Mr. Churchill's secretary, another little connection there. I just put the order in for the next two books. I'm so excited. Um, the portable typewriter, another evolution. The first portable typewriter, 19 pounds. No big deal. The word typewriter is one of the longest common words that can be made using only a single row on a keyboard. You know, QWERTY. I, I remember Mrs. Gamble. I remember elementary school, the home, the home keys. A, S, D, F, J, K, L, S, M, A. I remember. Mm-hmm. But anyway, one row you can do typewriter. So here's my question for y'all. There are three more 10 letter words that can be created using only the keys in one row of the keyboard. Okay, so three more, 10 letters each. Two of them start with the letter P, one starts with the letter R. So I'm gonna put a little description down in the description. Sorry to be redundant, um, giving you a couple more clues. Let's see if you can figure it out without Google searching. Uh, Woody Allen did all his screenplays on the same typewriter. I'm going to post for you a trailer for a documentary I've never heard of before, but it is now on my list of things to track down and watch. It's called California Typewriter. It's a documentary from 2017. And you know who's featured? Hanks. So it's common knowledge among us Hanksonites that he is a fan of the typewriter. So he is featured in this documentary along with John Mayer, um, historian David McCullough, Sam Shepard. Awesome. But if we're talking about typewriters, not only do we have to talk about Tom Hanks's collection, yes, there's a video for you to watch, um, has over 100 typewriters. At one point had about 200 typewriters. He said he loves hunting for these quality typewriters and he loves the sound. Those are his two favorite things. Uh, he's fascinated, he said, by the combination of art and engineering that goes into the typewriter. Tommy the Hanks Hanks said, every time you type something on a typewriter, it becomes a work of art. And let me clarify, a one-of-a-kind work of art. So deep. Um, there is, I can't show you because I'm recording on my phone, there's an app 
that Tom Hanks worked with a development company to make called Hanks Writer. H-A-N-X, Hanks Writer. Um, and it's for your phone, for your iPad, um, Android, and um, iOS. And you can... But of course, to get the upgrades, you gotta pay for it. Love you, Tom. I'm not paying $9.99 to get unlimited fonts and five different typewriters. I'm just gonna go with the one. So, and he said, Hanks Writer is just my little gift to the future Luddite hipsters of the world. <laughs> that made me giggle. Um, and think about this, that typewriters are writing machines that need only your imagination, coupled with your hands and ears to produce one letter, one word, one thought at a time, any of which can change the world. This is why Tom is amazing. Fabulous. Very, very interesting. Um, and also in the documentary, um, the, the California typewriter documentary, um, there is a guy who writes a, a manifesto about how, and he, he reads part of it briefly, about how society is so dependent on the digital and you know, digital forms of communication, they're not concrete, they're not real. You can't hold them in your hands. Yeah, you can hold a screen in your hands, you know, a device with a screen, but it's not, it's not the same. It doesn't have that same level of, of power. So, hmm. uh, they do mention Tom Hanks's collection of 17 short stories called Uncommon Type. And his fascination with the typewriter not only appears on the cover art, but also all of the 17 stories have somewhere embedded, um, Kind of like an Easter egg. There's a typewriter in every single episode in some capacity. So, um, that is why today's episode, Rage Against the Digital Machine, sometimes a little bit of old school, is pretty fun. And today's mug, thank you to co-worker Adam. Um, he sent me a mug that shows up as today's thumbnail. But first, Coffee. Because if I was writing for a living, I'd need to kind of get in the, the headspace and, oof, good stuff. So send me your mugs, please. Um, like the Facebook page and um, hope you have a wonderful Saturday. My goal today is uh, I have a to-do list. Let me show you. Boom, there's some of my to-do list. And I have an appointment later this afternoon to donate blood. I'm going to try. We'll see what my iron levels are like. Um, but trying to see if there's something I can do to support others out there. So hope you have a wonderful, wonderful beginning of the weekend. Behave, be good, be kind, continue to wash your hands. Please recycle and appropriately social distance. All right. See you later.